Workplace-centered TV shows are everywhere these days. Dramas and comedies thrive on this dramatic social setting. I mean, you're not always going to like the people you work with, right? <laughs> but where do you draw the line between normal disagreement and damaging social structure? You're watching Low Entropy Connect, and this is our list of our top five workplaces that are kind of toxic. <laughs> Being a lawyer is intense, and apparently not strictly legal if the work environment of suits is to be believed. Pearson Spencer Lit is supposedly a majorly successful law firm in New York in the show. However, they break multiple laws over the course of the series, including, but not limited to, practicing without a law degree and destroying evidence, the first of which is the main premise of the show. I'll take it. Unfortunately, we only hire from Harvard. Legality aside, the hiring process of this firm is atrocious, showing clear favoritism by only hiring Harvard graduates and then pitting their new hires against each other to prove themselves? Why? Because that's their overall office culture. <sighs> Pearson Spencer Lit is depicted as a cutthroat workplace where only those who are willing to sacrifice all social life and backstaff their coworkers are going to be rewarded. With all the power struggles and infighting, it's a miracle they get anything done. That's right. Donna, the one you tried to steal from me at dinner the other night, told Calm me. Calm down. I didn't try to steal anything. You made a promise to me! While Flack's lead character, PR rep Robin, is clearly a pro at her job, the environment of her workplace is subpar at best and toxic at worst. In a crisis aversion type field like hers, the fast-paced work environment makes sense. However, the lack of healthy work-life balance in their firm is clearly evident by how often Robin is called away from family or social events with no warning and is expected to pick up and leave. While uncalled professionals aren't toxic within themselves, the way in which Robin's boss talks to her and her colleagues in these situations is starting. There's blood in the water. Stop flapping around like a bunch of epileptic penguins and take control. Sophie calls Robin and threatens her for not missing work or even not coming in on one call, but for not picking up her phone on the first ring on her night off is atrocious. Most interactions with Sophie seem to end with at least one insult. And this theme of putting down coworkers in order to get results, has spread through the rest of the staff. This quickly becomes apparent in how Eve treats their new intern, Melody. Clearly, this is not an issue of a single person, but a work culture based around putting others down. Oh God, look at that. Did you dress yourself? Very nice pumpkin. She looks like she's been kidnapped by a murderer and dressed in his mother's clothes. <laughs> now, if we're gonna talk about abusive bosses, we can't forget about Dr. House and his team from the hit hospital series, House. Your wife is having an affair. What? You're orange, you moron. Insulting and manipulative, Dr. House seems to find joy in making his underlings miserable. His leadership style is a classic example of primarily negative reinforcement with very little positive feedback. This lack of support and constant criticism pits his employees against each other in the hopes of winning even a small token of approval. You're reading a comic book. And you're calling attention to your bosom by wearing a low-cut top. While this sometimes gets results, it also creates an unsafe environment, especially in a hospital setting, whereby the only important thing is to be right by any means necessary. The show actually addressed this risk, as Dr. House's team often gets in trouble for malpractice, and many of Dr. House's employees end up leaving due to the environment he has created. Well, where to begin? Sexual harassment, favoritism, racism? We all know Dunder Mifflin would be a terrible place to work in real life, but let's talk about why. Ironically, The Office was one of the few workplace shows that actually has 
a dedicated human resources person as a part of the team, Toby. However, it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. The manager, Michael, has clear favorites in the office and especially hates Toby for trying to police his questionable behavior. Mike, you still can't make fun of people for race or gender or sexual orientation or religion. Who let, who let the lemon head into the room? You are a waste of life and you should give up. While the show is hilarious and known for its awkward sense of humor, in real life, a lot of the characters' jokes and actions cross the line into inappropriate workplace behavior. Michael abuses his power constantly, and conflicts between co-workers are often ignored and brushed off as inconsequential. Even the hot ones aren't really that skinny. Where the office edged over the line of inappropriate workplace behavior, Madman straight up crosses it in almost every way listed so far and more. Cutthroat office culture? Check. Sexual harassment and sexism? Check. Blatantly overt racism? Check. Well, I'm all for the national advancement of colored people, but I do not believe they should advance all the way to the front of this office. But Madman doesn't stop there. The Sterling Cooper Advertising Agency also comes with a healthy dose of drinking in the workplace, unsafe work environments, occasional drug use, and the prostitution of employees. Yes, you heard that right. They agreed to let a client sleep with one of their own employees in exchange for business. You look radiant, Joan. May I call you Joan? I'm Herb, by the way. Well, I should hope so. We're the list of issues here is so atrocious. I can't even cover them all. Suffice to say, if you get the job in an office like this one, run. Don't walk out the door. With so many examples of bad working environments being depicted in the media, it can be hard to remember that these environments are toxic and shouldn't be seen as the norm. If you ever find yourself in one of these environments, don't be afraid to speak up. Make your concerns known. And if worse comes to worse, leave. Bad workplaces make for good TV drama, but they don't need to be your reality.